two, one. Nice to be joined by former Dublin and St. Vincent's footballer um, Jerry Brennan. I suppose to start off looking at your Dublin career first, um, Jerry, how do you reflect on your Dublin career overall? That's a, yeah, it's a big, big question, Paul. All right. Um, you know, you have a lot of fond memories of, of uh, obviously the, the few successes we had. Um, I, 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 one of the probably, funny enough, one of the, the, the probably freshest memories that is in my head is actually representing North Dublin development squads at under 13. Um, we were playing a little tournament out in Fingalians in, 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 in North County Dublin, Paul Flynn's club there, and we we're playing against South, uh, the South Dublin development squad. and. I just remembered a bit of pride uh, that you felt and the, and, and the excitement of, of, of putting on the jersey to, even though it was only North Dublin at that stage, uh, to kind of, that that for me started the um, the love affair with, 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 with wanting to become a senior footballer and uh, wanting to push on and, and um, uh, play in front of 80 odd thousand people in Coe Park, you know, but there's some of my, that's one of my still freshest memories. Uh, but yeah, look, so many great things happened, uh, uh, Paul. I, I, ten years playing with the seniors. Um, I suppose in effect, I would have been involved with a Dublin team of sorts from the age of thirteen to, to when I was 30, 31 years of age when I when I when I packed it in through injury, you know. So. And when you were called in in two thousand and seven, what was your initial feelings being called into the Dublin squad? Yeah, well, I, I, I had been kind of flirting around the, the, the training panel for um, coming out of under-21s in 2005. And would have played a couple of kind of challenge games in 2006 with the seniors and uh, didn't quite make the championship uh, squad that year. So, um, yeah, you, you the initial call to, to, to get involved probably went back to 2005. Um, uh, late 2005, early 2006, Paul. So, so yeah, there is a great excitement there um, to be acknowledged, to be recognised that uh, you 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 could be um, good enough to to push on and represent the county. And uh, you know, from 2006, Paul, I I I I would have been particularly disappointed not to have been involved. Dublin lost to Mayo in the semi final that year. So I would have been particularly disappointed not to have been involved in the squad. So I, I, I remember after that match, just putting my head down and and uh, working particularly hard over the Christmas. And I left. Uh, I lived um, a monk style, um, a, a monk like lifestyle rather for for those um, three three months or so to, to to make sure that I was hitting the ground running in two thousand seven. And eventually, I got put in to make the championship debut that year. Then you know. And. You said there in 2006 um, you were doing the extra work, but what was that work you were doing to make the break trip? So, uh, in a way, when you're going out running, and, and, and I suppose I would have gone out running Christmas Day, um, um, I, 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 I would have abstained um, in the early stages of, of, of my career um, from, from drink for three or four or five months at a time. Um, so that's the kind of thing I was doing and in my head Paul it was more psychological that if I'm out running on Christmas Day the chances of my nearest opponent in the, in the, in the team um, I, I doubt that he's out doing the same thing and you're just kind of building a bit of confidence within yourself that uh, you are doing a couple of extras and that when you do go back in the field in January uh, you should have a bit of an edge you know so you're, you're, you're just trying to do do a couple of little extras that um, helps you to stand out from your nearest competitor. Absolutely, and um, one of your key fundamentals of your game was to play <coughs> with a huge aggression. Do you think mm. early on in your career maybe there is a short fuse um, in your own career? Definitely, Paul. I I, I 
see, I, I, I played rugby in school and would have played senior cup rugby at Belvedere as well. So um, that uh, aggressive nature w- w- was was uh, something which helped me on the rugby field, but it's also something which you, you had to try to harness and um, uh, put, you know, to, to, to execute as well and to, you know, to, to use that natural aggression on the, on the GA field. It's something I probably took a couple of years to to to, to get my head around, uh, not to overstep the mark. But yeah, I certainly would have uh, seen red on a couple of occasions uh, during my career. Um, but that was evident from from underage as well. I had a couple of little incidents like that as well. But um, I suppose I have two older brothers, Paul, who who, who uh, would have toughened me up as well growing up in the house, and uh, older sisters as well. They're nearly worse. So. Um, yeah, I, I I was used to having to fight my corner and to and to take a few slaps as well, you know. So, and how do you think you controlled that as your career went on? Very simple. Uh, I was told if I keep getting put off, I won't be playing. Okay. Um, so so <laughs> it's as simple and as psychological as that. Uh, fear of not playing is what eventually helped me cop on. Um, I know some people, we'd be Caroline Curd, a um, uh, lovely lady from Sligo, sports psychologist, performance coach, been involved with a couple of teams now. Uh, she would have given me one tip, which was to put white tape on my wrist and use the white tape if I feel like I'm somewhat losing control uh, on the field and about to lash out. The white tape can be a, a physical and visible trigger to help re-engage the logical side of your brain. Uh, so I did that a couple of times, but um, ultimately it comes down to just if you keep getting put off, we can't rely on you anymore, and you need to you need to harness that aggression and you need to push it. Obviously, um, play to the line, and the odd time you might go over it, but but you can't be getting put off the field anymore, you know. So. And Caroline Curd, you mentioned her there, she's been mm. a sports psychologist for Limerick, Tyrone, yeah. and yourselves. But how special of a sports psychologist is she? Is it just helping players off the field as well as on the field? Mm-hmm. Well, I, 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 I think, Paul, the, they're within a group of 30, 40 egotistical elite athletes all striving for 15 jerseys. Um, you know, there's a massive amount of competition within the squad, and um, certainly what I found Caroline was really good at was um, helping you to develop uh, a level of self awareness to, to, to understand what's going on in your own head, um, to how to manage nerves, um, but even understanding the, 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 the link between the mind and the body the physiological responses that happen in the body when uh, you're faced with uh, um, a challenge or you're overthinking things or whatever it may be. And then by understanding what's actually going on, you become less fearful, less controlled by it. Therefore, being able to focus more in on what your task at hand is and what key areas you're supposed to be taking care of on the pitch. So that's kind of where I found uh, Caroline very, very beneficial. Um, to be able to bounce a few ideas off her and a few shots off her and given her, 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 her qualifications and uh, expertise she was a great help you know and 2007 your first three year how did you find the week of the big game the preparation and the day of it not thinking about it too much really yeah, you you, you... When you're younger, Paul, well, I, I remember playing all right the, the, the debut, like you're 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 kind of you're kind of cacking yourself in some ways because um, it, it, it's such a momentous occasion in the in your life, and uh, yeah, you certainly do feel quite nervous with the with the with the whole thing. But once you get out in the field, you 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 start getting your hands on the ball, um, start throwing your weight around, and guys running into you too. You you you, you just the better players are just able to block out the external stuff and just focus at the the job, uh, focus on the job at hand, and and, and that's what you do. Um, like in the build up to big games, ball, and, and obviously as you get a bit older and uh, during your career, 
it's just about routine and, and, and doing the same things and um not 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 overthinking and not getting caught up in your thoughts uh too much but uh by having a routine there uh paul that's something which a lot of high performers probably would have and uh they would try to stick to it you know and 2007 got to the semi-final against Kerry. Mm. A tough one to take because Kerry back then for Dublin, it was very hard to get over the line against Kerry. It was obviously very tough as a player to take that defeat, being lost to Kerry. Mm. Yeah, like during that period, um, I certainly would have always looked and, and admired, um, going back to our man 2002, uh, Tyrone and Kerry, Jordan, the the kind of the the um, uh, the noughties and into the um, 2000s and that, uh, sorry if yeah during the noughties because they were the, the the standout teams and obviously Kerry were standout during that period as well but also the tradition that that uh, that Kerry uh, maintain um, you're always trying to measure yourself against them and I used to love playing against the likes of the Tyrones and. Um, uh, Kerry at the time and Cork were obviously quite strong uh, too during that period so um, I figured the, the, the more often you're, you're playing against the better teams uh, Paul uh, the, the, the better able uh, you are to, to um, find out if you are actually good enough um, and you know there's a confidence that grows even with I know we suffered a few big defeats against uh, those teams over the, during that time but we did run them close on occasion eventually I think we bet them down in Fitzgerald Stadium, Kerry in the National League in, I think, 2010, which gave us huge confidence. It was the first time the Dublin team bet Kerry in 30, 40 years down there. Um, so when we faced them down in the Championship, which was the All-Ireland Final in 2011, um, we still had the confidence and the memories from from from, from beating them down in their own passion for Fitzgerald, in Fitzgerald uh, Stadium, you know? And 2008, you took a while out um, of the intercounty game. Mm. How was that? That was, Paul, I was just, what would you call it? I, I, I probably wasn't fully happy with my selection or lack of selection um, uh, come championship and uh, I took a bit of a hump and I, I just decided I'd I, I step away and uh, I eventually came back in after maybe four weeks or so. But uh, yeah, I, 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 I wouldn't have uh, uh, agreed um with with management at the time on a couple of things rightly or wrongly and um i uh i kind of made my call you know and stepped away but i did come back in then again you know and what made you come back in then eventually after that while out well you, you you'd uh you still had the hope and and, and desire and want to to represent your county uh so they billings would have <laughs> been a big influence on, on, on my decision to come back um, he would have touched base with me uh, on a couple of occasions just to um, share a bit of his wisdom with me um, on, 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 on dealing with the situation I was in and I suppose my, my dad as well and family would have been um, strong supporters that you have to suck it up and you have to you have to bide your time and your apprenticeship, so to speak, and you have to uh, keep your head down and, and, and be patient, you know, so so that's what I did. And back to the right coming in, just completely changed the landscape really of Dublin football. What do, what do you think he'd done for Dublin football when he came in at the start? Uh, well, I suppose he was trying to build on the success that Pillar Caffrey had had uh, had 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 made um, despite not winning the All Ireland. Pillar uh, and his management team brought a huge level of professionalism to the to the setup, and um, so Pat came in and tried to build on that. Um, I think mentally, Pat probably challenged the team in different ways um, to take us out of our comfort zone even more so. Um, I suppose he also introduced a few different personnel, had some fresh voices there, uh, Paul as well, which can bring different uh, insights and experiences to the table. And and, and I suppose guys kind of bought into what what uh, well most guys bought into what Pat was selling. Um, you know, to be a lot of lads disappointed not to have played under Pat. Um, but you know, from again my own experience now at the other ends involved in coaching management you know when you're 
when you're playing, the manager's great, and when you're not, when you're not playing, the manager's a bollocks. And uh, but that's just the uh, comes with the territory for for the manager and, and trying to manage all those different personalities is obviously a challenge. But but yeah, so yeah, Pat probably say psychologically he challenges in different ways to become tougher uh, on our on ourselves and. I think that's something which uh, helps us get over the line then in 2011. 2009, do you think it was a big learning curve? Obviously, you didn't want to get hammered by Kerry, but there was a lot of soul searching, I presume, there, and it brought a lot of players back in the dirt. Yeah, that was the, the start of Erwig's, I think, episode. We got hammered against Kerry, didn't we? Um, so, yeah, you, you, you have to learn from your defeats. And, and like I mentioned a few moments ago, uh, the benchmark was Kerry. The benchmark was Cork and Tyrone, and and you know ultimately uh, the big test Dublin kept losing to those same teams, and um yeah it was usually disappointing. And look at you just have to uh, a lot of things just went wrong very very early in that game, and uh, uh, it was a tsunami from 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 Kerry in terms of their attack, and we just never got it. We never recovered from it at all. But um. Yeah, the training got a bit harder again in, in uh, the following winter, I anyway, tell you that much. Yeah, I was just about to mention there, introducing the 6 a.m. training sessions mm. at the start. What was your reaction? <laughs> I, I, I didn't mind. I was happy enough with it. We, we, we had won the Club All-Ireland in 2008 with St. Vincent's, and we, we actually did 6 a.m. sessions that particular winter. Um uh, using DCU's facilities and with Mickey Whelan was 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 manager of the club and he was obviously a Pat's right hand man as well with Dublin and the coach of the team so so um, uh, the Vincent's guys involved in the Dublin panel weren't uh, um, uh, too uh, taken aback by 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 the announcement but uh, I think it's something that fellas embraced and they bought into it. and uh, I was obviously still younger twenty three maybe around that age uh, or at around that time Paul so you know you're you're, you're single in terms of marriage or, or no kids or not being married there's a couple of the older lads had uh, were married with kids or, or had kids so uh, I would have assumed uh, now that I have children it, um, it was a massive massive challenge for those guys you know but, but it had to be done you know and how did he take players out of their comfort zone you mentioned that earlier um, well, a very simple example would be um, you'd kind of be trained till you got sick, and then when you're finished getting sick, you go and do it again. And basically, those who did it progressed, those who didn't were let go. Um, not saying that you had to get sick, but um, you, you, you were close to it. And once you got through the session, each time you were pushed harder and harder and harder, there's a massive confidence that comes from that ball that knows that you can actually work your way through the crap, through the hardship. Um, and, and then the hope is then when you're faced with similar scenarios or challenges on the field in key championship games, that you're able to kind of take confidence and resolve from, from those previous experiences of being pushed so hard, you know, so... But that's probably an example of how Pat helped break you down mentally, yeah. And he obviously took a massive fight away from Dublin football. There were so many close calls and so many fine weapons. But do you think doing them extra 6 a.m. sessions, not being so involved with the media as previous years and stuff like that was a huge difference in the end? It was a massive difference in the end. So, so I suppose to... The culture or the, the norms uh, at that time when, when Pat came in, there was certainly, rightly or wrongly, more access to, to um, the media, had more access to players and, and, and probably management. And um, you, the messages that were going out there were probably uh, being, uh, uh, there were far too many probably messages being put out there from the Dublin camp and by too many people. And I suppose you need to kind of rein it in and... Uh, um, and that's what Pat did, you know. So, and also we're there to play football, not to be chatting uh, to media um, or anything like that. So we start winning a few All Ireland, you can go and do that. But at the time being, you know, we haven't won anything yet, you know. So you have to keep the head down. 
2011, an unbelievable year um, for Dublin. The semi final against Donegal, um, probably not, won't go down as one of the classics, eight points to six victory. But did that worry with a performance like that going into the All Ireland final? Not really, uh, Paul. The, the, the like, championship is all about winning, and how you win sometimes is. is uh, not that it's irrelevant. You you would like to win playing a nice style of football, a nice brand. But um, I, I remember going into that Tony all game. We 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 knew that we were going to face some sort of pack defense, but we didn't really um expect to 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 see what we saw on that particular day. And it took us probably 40, 50 minutes to actually get to some sort of grips on it. Tony Gall, I remember conceding all the kickouts and um. It was uh it was it was a tough challenge, all right, going to that game. But now once you win um in the championship Paul, that's the main thing, you know. The build up that year for an all Ireland final, how did you find it with with it being your first final? Yeah, it's just, look at this huge excitement, um with, with with family and friends and club and um past would have been very quick to to get a lot of the uh, the frills um, and the external stuff out of the way um, in the first week I think it was three weeks of the final so the media stuff was done and the tickets were all done the gear and suits and all that stuff were all done and then we just went into our own bubble and um, fell us stead away from media stead away from their social media accounts and that they just kept the head down and you're you're, you're, you're trying not to become consumed or, or uh, overawed by 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 the occasion, um. Even though it's a massive achievement to get to a final, but if you become overawed or overthink it, Paul, you end up um underperforming on the day and wasting wasting mental energy. So, we yeah, Pat would have been good at um, you know, keeping us in that bubble, you know. So so that's that's the important thing. Would would it be before a lot of all Ireland finals that you will be getting texts about tickets from people mm. you might not even know? Yeah. Yeah, you will get all sorts of stuff now. Um, my my dad would have managed all that now for me. Um, uh, we kind of found the system for tickets over the years, so um, I would have taken one or two for for um, uh, one or two people close to me, and then uh, the rest of the allocation all went through my dad. Then so uh, whatever he decided to do, he 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 dished out the tickets and collected the money and everything else. So. Um, that meant they didn't have to worry about it, like you know. But that's the system we came up with, and it worked well, like you know. Two thousand and eleven, and must give you goosebumps when you're looking back at it. Um, against Kerry, the first half you did have a lot of chances where you could have probably been a bit more ahead. The would you? I I still haven't watched the game, Paul. Would you believe now? I I I I I've seen the last ten minutes already right here and there, and there's obviously some great clips of, uh, Cluxton putting the ball over the bar, Kevin Max goal, and Bernard Brogan, Kevin Olin kicking super points. Um, but uh, other than that, I actually haven't I haven't I can't really remember it too much, and it's, it's something I bloody must do. I must have a look back and uh. Try to uh try to enjoy it now that I'm uh, I'm out of the loop, you know. But uh, no, you, you always knew that Kerry were gonna be strong and come back, and such a tradition and uh, huge talent in the squad. But uh, we kind of figured if we we're in the game with ten minutes to go, that we would uh we 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 would have a chance, and um, thankfully we uh were able to push on. I think we were four points down at that time, and we were able to push on and and uh, just. Sneak, uh, sneak through in the end, you know. Was it 12 11, I think, or 12 11? Uh, the or, 112 to 111, I think. Oh, yeah, 112 to 111, yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, it was uh, yeah, it was some feeling all right now, you know. And being four points down, I think it was on 62nd or 63rd minute around then. Um, what's going through your head at that stage being four points down? Um, you're 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 conscious of the scoreboard, Paul, and that you're trying to push on, uh, and conscious of the time uh, that's left. But but you're 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 still not panicking. You're still sticking to a bit of a game plan that was kind of working. Provided we, we, we well, we did need to put a few more scores on the board. But we um yeah we we, we 
we were we we had developed as a team to uh, and, and reached a place where we weren't going to panic. Um, and that's that's what we kind of did. We stuck at it and we forced Kerry into a few unforced errors and, and giving balls away and, and we capitalised on those uh, mistakes and were able to uh, punish them for it, you know. But yeah, yeah, you just yeah, you can't panic, you just you have to stay composed, you know. So and I, I know Clutton and Kevin McLean's goal and Clutton's mm. point would be a lot of the talking points, but like a few close calls there, I suppose Eamon Fennell winning the hot ball twice yeah. in that game, that was a huge yeah. moment really. Yeah, that was huge and, and, and I, I had but he won a, I did won a breaking ball from a kick out, I think. And um was fouled and I, I, I gave Donna a little push in the face and um the ball was thrown up. Uh and thankfully Amo won it and and, and, and um I got a hand on it and we, we went down to get a couple of scores from that like but uh, that was a huge, huge moment in the game, you know. So he's a he's a huge lump of a man, Amo. So um we we, we, we always knew we would have got a hand to it, like you know. So. And I've heard you describe winning an all alien to being like a kid at Christmas when you go down to mm, open yeah. up presents. Yeah, yeah. That's uh yeah, we were doing a camp with Open Fingalians again. Um, I remember we were up there, it was, it was after 2013, but with Kieran with Kenny, one or two other lads with Flinner, and uh, and someone asked that question, what's it like? And, and you were trying to make it tangible for the young kids, and, and that's what popped into my head. And So it's something I've used since, even with adults, to, 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 to give them a sense of, of, of um, what it's like, you know, when, you're, when you still have that... Uh, what would you call it? Uh, innocence is a, of a child's with a belief in, in uh, some man coming down the chimney and leaving all, all the presents and, and, and what's he going to bring you? Um, but yeah, yeah, that's what it's like, all right, Paul, you know? And I suppose after um, 2011 and 2012, losing mm. to Mayo um, was a tough one to take, but do you think he bought into the hype there maybe as well that? We, I tell you what we did in, in yeah, 2012, it wasn't so much that we bought into the hype. Um, we we were still a bit hung over. Um, the, the celebrations had carried on far too long into January and February of, of 2012. Um, and and uh, so it was Dublin's first all Ireland in 16 years. Everywhere we went, we were we were being being um, rolled out and uh, going to fucking. And, and bars and whatever and there was a session on somewhere a lot of the time and, and I was certainly one of them who, who, who enjoyed himself for too long and I think that semi-final against Mayo we were 10 points down at half time and we actually still nearly won it we nearly won it with a, I think David Clark made a great save off uh, Bernard I think, towards the end of that game but um, it would have been robbery had we uh, had we have won it but um uh, I think Donegal obviously bet uh, Mayo in the final then, but um, yeah, yeah, we 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 probably just drank and celebrated for for too long on that particular occasion, Paul. You know, but we learned from it in the years later with with Jim, uh, Gavin, having won the one in two thousand and eleven. We won with Jim in two thousand and thirteen, Paul. Um, while there was massive uh, uh, excitement and, and celebration again, it, it just wasn't at the same level. Or intensity uh, of, of 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 what was experienced in in two thousand eleven, you know. And yeah, you mentioned winning in twenty thirteen there under Jim Gavin and going on to do five in a row as he achieved as double manager. But yeah, how special of a manager is he? Yeah, look, a, a, a bit like Pat Gilroy coming in to build on pillars, good work. Um, Jim came in and and, and built on um, Pat's good work and. Um, he brought his own slant, his own style, his own uh, management team as well, um, which which again brings new ideas, new insights, new challenges, and new opportunities for players to grow and to learn. So, um, you know, Jim, an extremely organised uh, guy, uh, very methodical in 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 how he approaches life, um, and 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 that kind of approach was something which he 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 would have shared. Uh, with us as players in, in, in how we prepared for opposition and breaking down opposition uh, analysis and, and um, the strengths and weaknesses of, 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 of teams and players we'd be facing. And, and um, he, he certainly brought that level of detail to a different level again. Um, 
Uh, but that's just the type of personality that Jim was. And uh, um, I suppose when you in getting into management, um, Paul, or for leadership positions, you know, you can't borrow um, the characteristics um, or the styles of other people. You have to be authentic and um, otherwise players will see right through you. And, and I think that's something um, we would have experienced with Jim that, that uh, while, while acknowledging the, the success of what had gone on before, um, he was always very uh, conscious of, of uh, I suppose, bringing his own bringing his own stance and his own type of play to the, to the whole setup, you know. So it was definitely, it was, it was while it was probably more detail in terms of analysis, Paul, um, in, in, in many ways, it was uh, a more unstructured uh, approach to play and, and that was more freestyle in the early years, um, almost a man-on-man everywhere type approach. And uh, that obviously evolved after the defeat in 2014 to, <coughs> to Tony Gall in the semi-final. And, uh, and um, brought it to a new place then in 2015. And, you know, the rest is kind of history there to go on and win five all Ireland's unbelievable. And, and Desi Farrell coming in now, again, he's, he's kind of adding his own little stance and building on the good work of Jim too, like, you know, so. And as an ex-player being involved with Dublin, mm. how have you took um, all this notion of Dublin's getting extra funding and helping them massively? Cause to split them in two as well. Yeah, how you took that. Yeah, like I can understand um, why people, non-Dublin people, would, would would feel that way. Um, but I think when you actually, you know, dig deep into the detail um, from the funding point of view, you know, the funding was was set up over 10, 15 years ago. At this stage, Paul, to get more young children in primary schools to participate in Gaelic games because there was a massive void and a massive hole there and uh, Crow Park Strategic Committee um, was, was the task force was put in place going back to, to identify where there are holes in the GA as an organisation and in particular in the capital and how they can seek to fill uh, that hole appropriately and, 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 and funding for primary schools was was, uh, was, was one of the areas that um, uh, they pumped a lot of money into. Um, so, again, it, it comes down to the population as well, Paul, that we, obviously Dublin is a big area and the numbers are continuing to grow. And with that, you got to bring in more funding then as well if you want to promote the game as opposed to uh, promoting Dublin football, you know. So I don't know what the answer is going forward. Um, you know, there's certainly numerous, like funding helps, but it's not... You know the core reasons for success. Um, there's a lot of county boards probably have to have a look at themselves and and um, and uh, look at what they're doing and to see you know is there any ways that they can improve that doesn't involve massive amounts of funding, whether it be structurally uh, development squads. Um, and there's there's a whole host of different ways that you can seek to improve, uh, which doesn't necessarily depend on funding. You know. So. And what's it been like? Playing with Dermot Connolly, club and county over the last few years, I think. Dermot, yeah, Dermot, yeah, he, he he's such a natural talent, uh, Paul. And um, I say my last year minor with the club, um, I was I was captain of the team that year, and and Dermot's two years younger than me, so he was brought up to play for us. Um, uh, a skinny whippet of a guy then, um, young kid, but just. Uh, ridiculously talented, uh, brave, and uh, headstrong, and 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 uh, everyone knew he was going to be a, a big talent even from that early age, you know. So, yeah, it, it, it's 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 been yeah, we've been very fortunate to 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 play with Dermot and and to uh, be part of uh, the success with him, with the club, and with the county as well. Like you know, so he's a super guy. And is it frustrating when you? For one sense, with the injuries you have picked up, because I'm sure yourself, you'd still love to be playing club football, but just with the injuries and everything, it was yeah. probably is impossible. Yeah, like it, like the, the my my injury was probably started in 2013, um, in the warm up of the national league game against Donegal. It was the last league game, regular league game, up in Bally Buffet, and uh, I tore a stomach muscle in the warm up. Um, which which led to a groin surgery, 
um, after the All Ireland final, or after we so we won the club, uh, we won the All Ireland in twenty thirteen, and then we won the Dublin Championship and the Leinster Championship that year. I was captain of the team, so I had to postpone the surgery. I eventually got the surgery done over the Christmas time. And then we went on to win the Club All Ireland in 2014. I just woke up back for that uh, against Castle Bar. And when we went back in with Dublin in 2014 training, um, the body began to break down very rapidly with Achilles and a whole host of different things. And I was really till the end of 2015 trying to get things right, Paul. And um, I, 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 while I retired from Dublin in, in, in after 2015, I, 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 I hadn't kicked the ball on the field for Dublin in a competitive game since the All Ireland final in twenty thirteen. So it's two two years of being injured. But during those two years we won um club championships. We were we were in five county finals in a row. I think we won four provincials uh with the club. So I was able to get away with the pace of club games what playing with injured, but at county level I wasn't able to well it's very hard to get away. But, uh, playing with any uh, substantial injuries at uh, county level, you know, you'd be exposed very rapidly. So uh, the success of the club um, would have fed into the the miles of the body. But um, would I change it? No, I wouldn't. You know, it is what it is. And the way I played and the way I trained, I, I, I kind of trained hard and put the body on the line. And, and uh, um, it is what it is, you know, so. And just finally, you know, <laughs> from being... With Carlo this year, and um, I find it frustrating now being with an inter county setup, no lives in the tunnel, and players are still kind of having to do their own bit of Zoom sessions and skin sessions, and yeah. it could be very nothing. It, like, it, it's uh, like uh, I'm, I'm very much a glass half full, even if the glass is empty, I'm still, I'm still looking up, uh, Paul, to be honest. So, um, and uh. You know, I think we have to be, I suppose, fortunate and, and probably commend, not probably, but do commend the, the I will commend the GA and, and, and the fact we got some club uh, games and, and county games played before the start of the year. Um, I, I I would imagine, um, and even chatting to a couple of the Carlo guys here and there, certainly those from the more rural parts of the, of the county and guys from rural Ireland, would probably struggle that bit more because of the, uh, the lack of maybe human contact. Um, you know, I'm in an urban area, so you're 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 getting used to the neighbours, getting to know neighbours, and and, and um, um, I can walk to the shops or what have you, and and uh, we're lucky that way. But yeah, it, it's it's you know we you can allow yourself to get bogged down with negative thoughts as, as players, uh, Paul. But um, you know, I think we have to be grateful for you know the fact we live in a fairly wealthy country um uh guys have rules over their head defeating um and 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 it is what it is the whole world is suffering and, and uh, we all have to carry our share of that suffering on our backs and uh and just be ready for when we are given the nod to go again which obviously looks like it'll be after easter so it'll it'll it'll, it'll bring a whole new um concept to uh to what Easter is about, what Lent is about, Paul. Anyway, I think so. An extra bit of sacrifice before the uh, the good Lord rises on Easter Sunday, and hopefully after that we'll we'll um, we'll all rise up and get back playing as well. You know, so absolutely. Um, great to get an insight into your career, Jerry Brennan, and thanks many for your time.